Where do you think this is? Egypt? No. The answer is Nubia. Today's Sudan in Africa. Hi everyone, welcome back to African Arts at Africa Center Hong Kong. This is Jihiro and it's season 1 episode 3 and today we're gonna talk about Nubian art. Though the culture of Nubia deserves the same significance as its popular neighbor Egypt, it has been forgotten for many many years. Why? And who are the Nubian people? How did their lives look like? For more than 3000 years, a series of kingdoms flourished in this area called Nubia. It came from an ancient Egyptian word for gold, Nob. The name makes sense if you know how many gold mines they have in that area. All the yellow dots here shows the locations. Other than gold, they are known to have manufactured potteries and iron weapons tools with locally developed skills. And they traded it. It was like a trade center. Ruling from Kerma, Napata, Meroe, the kingdom of Kushite had a large influence on people inside and outside Nubia. Let's look at how ordinary people live their lives. This is the graphics created based on the excavation in Hamada, the city two miles away from Meroe. As you can see, it was an urban city. We are talking about the period of 100 BCE to 100 CE and many urban landscapes like this were found along the Nile. What you can see here is the town gate, the main street with trees, the temple which is interestingly integrated into the other part of the town, the wall, the plaza or large open space that is speculated to be market or storage, and some workshops potentially for metallurgy, pottery production and other crafts. The most prominent building is the town hall which was four to five story building and very much influenced by Ptolemaic style. Wow, Nubia was so urbanized already around 100 BCE to 100 CE. That's when Japanese lived like this. So we had a long way to go. But wait a minute, if Nubia or the Kingdom Kush had such a rich culture like this, why no one really talks about it? There is a reason. George Andrew Reisner, an American archaeologist of ancient Egypt and Nubia, made a critical mistake when interpreting the deposit. He thought Kerma, the first capital of Kush the Kingdom, was originally the base of an Egyptian governor and that these Egyptian rulers evolved into the independent monarchs of Kerma. So he basically took the perspective that anything good in Nubia is the result of Egyptianization. It is true that the Nubia had some influence from Egypt, but it was more of a mutual influence rather than simply assimilation driven from Egypt into Nubia. One mistake Reisner made was that he cited the propaganda that the Egyptian government projected towards the Nubians. Egyptians and Nubians were fighting at them. So Egyptian described Nubian as barbaric inferior beings, which was not true at all. And on the ground level, there were often intermarriage between Egyptian men and Nubian ladies, which Reisner thought is diluting Egyptian bloodline. Okay, let's get into art. Here are three artworks that reveal that the Nubians were taking charge of their own kingdoms by themselves. Number one, pyramids. The biggest difference between Egyptian pyramids and Nubian pyramids is where they bury the dead. While typical Egyptian pyramids have accessible room inside or right under it, the Nubian pyramids have no access to the pyramids at all. The staircase exists, but it's filled in, and theoretically you cannot see it. Number 2. Tanutamani and his mother's tomb Under the leadership of Kushite King Pier, the Kushite held sway over the northern neighbors for nearly a hundred years. Tanutamani, who was the last Kushite king of Egypt, buried at Kuru, was a nice man. He built his mother a tomb. Mothers in Egypt get buried in the valley of the queen, not in the valley of the king where the pharaohs go. Here in Kush, you get buried right beside you. Another thing to mention is that in order to create this tomb, they've taken an Egyptian underwrought book and they ripped apart the part that they don't like and they put some other things that they liked better. Number 3. Hatha headed crystal pendant. It is a crystal ball amulet surmounted by gold head of Hatha crowned with disc and horns. The ball is bored vertically and has a gold disc at the base on which it stands. 
probably contained substances believed to be magical. Other than this jewelry, there were many many jewelries and accessories found in Nubia, especially the ones made from gold. It is a shame that I've never heard of Nubian culture and about Nubia before I start researching. Through this research, I learned there are a lot of other things to learn outside your textbook. And I'm glad that researchers are trying very hard to rewrite the history, rewrite the narrative written based on stereotypes and racism. There are still a lot to talk about on Nubian culture, like how female were powerful in that kingdom. I hope you research by yourself more and explore this amazing world of Nubia. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week.